grade 10s, welcome to the first lesson in the series on quantitative aspects of chemical change, also known as stoichiometry. Scientists often have to measure chemical substances. They do this for various reasons, such as to find out how much of a substance is present or to work out how much of a chemical is needed or produced in a chemical reaction. Think about it. Quantitative is about quantity. So quantitative chemistry is a study of how to measure the quantity or amount of substances to be used or produced in chemical reactions. Keke will explain what we mean by the quantitative aspects of chemical change by making use of a recipe to bake muffins. Everyone knows that food is a really important part of our lives. But have you ever wondered about how we get from this, the raw ingredients, to this, the finished product? Easy, right? All you need is a good recipe that tells you exactly how much of which ingredients you will need. Throw in some measuring and mixing utensils, and in no time, you're serving up a feast. Mm. But by now, I'm sure you're asking yourselves, what do muffins have to do with chemistry? To answer your question, I want you to really think about what a recipe actually is. Over hundreds of years, cooks have experimented with a variety of ingredients and came up with many delicious and nutritious combinations. They realized that if you add a specific amount of flour, water, yeast, and salt together, the product is bread. But if you take away the yeast, substitute the water with milk, and add a couple of eggs and sugar, the product is a cake. They also realized that if you add too few eggs or too little liquid, the result will be a crumbling mess. So they not only had to get the ingredients right, but they also had to get the amount of each ingredient. These had to be combined in specific ratios to produce a specific product. Only when the formula was just right could a recipe be passed on. Are you beginning to see how cooking and chemistry are a lot alike? Not yet. Well, chemists also experiment with different combinations of ingredients. In their case, chemical substances and elements to come up with very specific products. And they also record their recipes. They write down detailed steps for each reaction and include careful measurements. These chemical recipes are summarized as balanced chemical equations. For example, to make water, you need to react oxygen and hydrogen. The recipe is summarized in the chemical equation O2 plus 2H2 reacts to form 2H2O. We could think of a chemical reaction as a recipe that we must follow to produce a new product. We can't just add random amounts of chemicals together and expect to produce our desired product. We need to work out the specific quantities that need to be added together. To bake crumpets, we need specific ingredients, but more importantly, look at the quantities. Two cups of flour, three quarter cup of sugar, and one cup of milk. This recipe will result in about 24 crumpets. The unit of measurement in this recipe was a cup, which measures volume. Scientists decided to use a special unit of measurement to define the quantity or amount of molecules used in a chemical recipe. This unit is the mole. This word originates from the Latin word that means big pile. The mole is the standard international unit for the amount of a substance. This amount of a substance, a mole, can be related to the relative atomic mass of a substance. More about the mole in another lesson, but first, let's talk about relative atomic mass. The relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of the atoms of the element relative to the mass of one carbon-12 atom, which is given a mass of 12. From the periodic table, we know that the mass of one carbon atom is 12 atomic mass units. However, because relative atomic mass is compared to the mass of a carbon atom, relative atomic mass is without a unit. On the data sheet that you will receive in exams, we see that the approximate relative atomic mass is usually given below the symbol for each element. In some periodic tables, the relative atomic mass is at the top of the block. Make sure that you always check the key to find out which number is the mass. 
So, what is relative atomic mass really? Scientists regard it as the average mass of the atoms of the naturally occurring mixture of isotopes. The relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of the atoms of the naturally occurring mixture of isotopes. Remember, isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons, giving them a different mass number. These are all naturally occurring isotopes of hydrogen. Scientists calculate the average mass amongst all the naturally occurring hydrogen isotope molecules. This is why the relative atomic mass of hydrogen equals 1,01 on the periodic table. We can also calculate the relative mass of molecules and of ionic compounds. Let us first look at the mass of molecular substances. Relative molecular mass is the sum of the atomic mass of all the atoms in the molecule. Examples of molecular substances are water with the formula H2O, carbon disulfide, formula CS2, ammonia or NH3, and carbon dioxide, CO2. It is very easy to calculate the molecular mass of a molecule. All you need is a periodic table. The symbol for relative molecular mass is M subscript R. This quantity has no unit. Let's calculate the relative molecular mass of an ammonia molecule. We start by writing the symbol for relative molecular mass and then, in brackets, the formula for ammonia. Remember that the relative molecular mass is calculated by adding the individual relative atomic masses of the atoms in the compound. Now, we need to find the relative atomic mass of nitrogen and hydrogen on the periodic table. Nitrogen has a mass of 14, and hydrogen has a mass of 1. Using these values, the sum of the masses of the atoms in ammonia is 14 plus 3 times 1. We multiply the mass of hydrogen by 3, since there are 3 hydrogen atoms in the molecular formula. That adds up to a relative molecular mass of 17. Compounds such as sodium chloride, copper sulfate, or ammonium chloride are known as ionic compounds. In these compounds, positive ions and negative ions are joined by ionic bonds in a crystal lattice. For these ionic compounds, we use the term relative formula mass for the mass of the simplest unit of ions in the lattice. So, for example, in the sodium chloride ionic lattice, there is one sodium ion for every chloride ion. The same symbol is used to represent relative molecular mass and relative formula mass. Let's calculate the relative formula mass of aluminium nitrate. As before, we write down the symbol for relative formula mass and then the correct formula for one formula unit of aluminium nitrate. In this formula unit, there are 1 aluminium, 3 nitrogen, and 9 oxygen atoms. We find the relative atomic masses of the different elements on the periodic table. And substitute these into the formula and find that the relative formula mass is 213. We have seen how to find the relative molecular mass of a substance. In a later lesson, we will look at how to find the number of particles in a sample of a substance. Remember that you can find more resources in the Quantitative Aspects of Chemical Change series guide and on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye!